The history of men's long hair. Hello, hair growers, and welcome back for another video. My name's Thomas, if you're brand new, and I make style and hair related videos every single week. So if that's your kind of thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the like button if you like what you see here today, because it really, really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Now, in today's video, we're taking a trip back in time and having a look at the history of men's long hair. I was very inspired by a post. I can't take full credit for this concept. I was inspired by a post from Beard, Brand Alliance, who actually did a post called The History of Men's Long Hair, and I found it super, super interesting, and it encouraged me to go and do a little bit more research on my own, just to have a look at where long hair came from for men and why it's gone in and out of fashion over the times. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a leap back and have a look at different points in time. I'm not gonna cover every single piece, because if I did, this video would probably go for three weeks, so it's, I'm just gonna cut it down into the main points in time where long hair was really significant and just what I found super interesting about the whole thing. So let's get into that and we'll start from the very beginning. Let's start from the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. <laughs> All right, so long hair from the beginning. Let's just go back to, well, from what I could find on the internet, where we first see men with long hair. And it's the cavemen, right? The cavemen that wear that Fred Flintstone outfit, carrying around a bone. <laughs> no, uh, who knows if they even wore that? They probably wore nothing. But look, the main thing is with cavemen, when we think of one or any image that anybody's been given, they've always got long hair and a beard. Now, why is that? In my research and what I could put together is cavemen are like the epitome of what a human should live like. You know, like all they need to worry about is eat, sleep, shit, and grunt, have sex, and then repeat all over again, right? What doesn't sound appealing about that? You know, no going to work for money, just do whatever you want, right? Like that sounds great. No, but in essence, if you take away everything that society has built, also just making a disclaimer, this video isn't about bashing society and the damage it's caused to the world because it has caused a lot of damage, but it's also done a lot of great things like YouTube and technology, all those things, they're great. If you take all the things that are in society, like equipment, clothes, the business corporate world, uh, beauty products. Like if you stripped a man of everything, he you, you're looking at a man exactly how he was designed, right? Naked, with a beard, and really long hair. So when we see that in the most natural form, a caveman wasn't born with a pair of scissors in his hands. The caveman wasn't born with a razor and shaving cream. It's how we're actually meant to look. And I did a video just before looking at the reasons why guys even grow their hair out. And what was really funny is a lot of the answers were to be free, to feel out of constraints of what people say they should. And this is what I'm saying. Society has kind of built this image around how men should look, which actually makes more sense when we get further in the timeline. A man is built literally to have long hair, and a beard. That's how we're designed to look. So if we look at it from the beginning, having long hair and a beard is more normal than wearing a bloody t-shirt. Like that's an odd concept to sort of think about, isn't it? Like, cause a t-shirt is a plant that's been processed, then stitched together by someone who's very arty, then worn by somebody that's got the right body shape for that thing. It's completely engineered. And yet long hair and beards is freaking out of the question for some people. You know what I mean? It's just so ridiculous. And somewhere along the line, this has been forgotten. And yeah, I just thought it was a really important thing to note is a man with long hair and a beard should not be looked at as scruffy. It is more normal than wearing a t-shirt, which is apparently normal and clean cut and whatever. Like, I just found that really interesting. So, but that's the first point we really see men in their true form. Okay, then if we move a little bit further into timeline or human civilization, if you like, if we look at like ancient times, what was weird was all parts of the world have different ancient civilizations in different countries doing different things. And what was really interesting to me in my research that I found was all of these different communities didn't have the internet, so they weren't connected to each other. They all had long hair in their community on men, but long hair meant different things in all of those communities. So it's something that most ancient societies played around with, but 
they a didn't know that each other was doing it and they assigned a certain meaning to this for some reason if we look at ancient egypt so when i was doing research on this i was like oh that is so interesting so ancient egyptians back in their time were considered really stylish people long hair on men was normal however it was completely cosmetic and it was to change their look up not only did they wear long hair but it wasn't actually their own most of the men would shave their hair have a wig made and then they would wear it for cosmetic purposes right along with it being cosmetic as well for the egyptians it was also a way of keeping themselves clean and free of lice and things like that and overall just easier to maintain their actual body without needing to have the long hair with it because back then as well there wasn't all these facilities uh, to clean yourself there wasn't shampoo that you could buy at Woolies <laughs> you know like uh, maintenance was a little bit more difficult so they actually used to shave their head wear wigs and just use it as a cosmetic sort of thing and I thought that was really cool so the ancient Egyptians used long hair in that way. And I do have a couple of pictures on the blog. I wrote a blog post about this as well of ancient Egyptian wig and then a man wearing one. They were super, super cool. And then if we also like scroll along uh, the timeline at, the, well, in ancient times as well. So in ancient Rome, long curly hair was considered quite normal until this I found interesting as well. Julius Caesar, came along and convinced people that having short hair was better because in battle it gave enemies less to grab onto. Now, the, the thing with Julius Caesar though is he was able to, one, get them to see the sense in that and then keep the trend going. So men started having their hair short all the time, not just for with battle. So thank God Julius Caesar isn't alive because if he was an influencer, we'd probably be at war. And if we were at war, we'd probably be losing because we didn't take the liberty of cutting our hair. <laughs> and they'd be pulling it and grabbing it and we would definitely lose because they're smart. No. But yeah, I thought that was really interesting. So he was able to influence a whole nation and then neighboring nations were like, hey, that is a really good idea. Maybe we should cut our hair short. And I believe that's how they all started setting that trend and it becoming more normalized there. But then if we go over to like medieval Europe, things change again. So having long hair was only for rich people. Same thing with the Egyptians. It was because if you were a commoner and you didn't have much money, you didn't have the money to get the services that you needed to maintain it all and keep the hygiene healthy. Again, there was no like dead all and no head and shoulders like available around the corner you know you had to have money to maintain these things and because long hair as you probably know as a guy with long hair it is hard to maintain but thank god we get our hands on products very easily these days for very affordable prices and can maintain it back then they really didn't have an option so if you had short hair it was most likely you didn't have much money in the bank and if you had long hair you were lapping it up that's a cool thought isn't it like I'd be considered rich right now if I was back in medieval Europe. If only that were true. <laughs> I mean, which time was better? I had this thought as well. This makes a lot of sense if you think about it. In medieval Europe, if it was a trend to have your, well, not a trend, but for poorer people to have short hair, if you think about the population, the majority of the population are not wealthy. So there is, a, there is a chunk of the population that is wealthy. It is quite big. Majority of people that are walking around, they're not cashed up with millions of bucks in their pockets. And what does that mean? That means if we were to revert back to that time right now, most people would have short hair because most people didn't have a lot of money. So it's very easy to see how it became the majority rules thing because more people would have had short hair and they would have gone, well, we don't have money, but we'll just act like it's cool. It makes sense. Right? I don't actually, I didn't read that anywhere, but when I thought about it and put all the bits of information together, I was like, that's probably how short hair being normal has come forward in main society so heavily. Because still today, it's like, whoa, you got long hair. We're still fighting the fucking battle, right? So yeah, I found that super interesting. And yeah, just, I liked the thought that I'd be considered rich if I was in medieval Europe. One day, one day. So that's a little bit about ancient civilizations. Again, as well, there were the Vikings who were these big beefy men that wore animal fur, had some big ax thing. 
wore braids and it was a sign of beauty along with their beards and their braids. Uh, they looked very cool and it was like meaty. It was like a scary thing to have long hair. So they were very cool. I, lo I, I would have liked to live in that time. Although I don't know if I would have been able to, no, <laughs> I prefer today. <laughs> so yeah, that's ancient civilizations. And then when I moved further along the timeline, I kind of went, where's the next most interesting thing that happened with long hair? After medieval and ancient times, we come into more developed civilization. So long hair started creeping in probably around the early 60s um, when the Beatles came out. They started wearing their shag mops and stuff like that. In the 70s, that's when it started like really hitting home. But what was happening is all these men were getting inspired to grow their hair longer because musicians that they looked up to were really inspired by it. There was also Bob Marley in this time who had long flowing dreadlocks. Dreadlocks were another cultural thing that you know, it happened all around the world, but it died off in certain places and it really rose in the reggae scene, which is why it's so rasta and it got really adopted by those people. This is what I've read as well, by the way, I wasn't there to see it, but I've done research, okay? <laughs> but yeah, the main point in this time, although in society people were like, uh, short hair's the way, people or men in general found following these artists and growing their hair long, A, gave them a sense of self and they also belonged to something that was different from what everyone else said and the fact that these rock stars were so popular no one could really argue the point with them that if they wanted long hair they were going to have long hair so that made it okay for everybody else to kind of do it and not only that there were other bands and stuff that were rocking mullets so around this time too like 60s 70s the mullet really came in horrid hairstyle i even had a mullet in High school? Yeah, I think in year 10. The mullet was really in at that time, and so was the long hair beach bum look, so the blonde surfy hair. That was also prominent around this time. So the shag mop was going on, the Beatles, they ended up turning their shag mops into long flowing hair with beards. That's where that look came from, or they obviously took a leaf out of the caveman's book. <laughs> yeah, they sort of really influenced it. It was really music orientated. That's where a lot of people started getting their fight back. It would have been an interesting time to be around because around that time as well, it just was a big no to have long hair as a guy. It was just like frowned upon. And again, going back to the caveman point, why was it frowned upon if you were born that way? Like, it's so weird. I just, I just can't understand it. Leaving that period and jumping forward another 50 years, so long hair for men today, it is very, very, very apparent that long hair for men <laughs> is coming back. Nearly every second guy I see these days has a man bun, which is epic and I love that. So long hair has definitely reared its head again, but this time I think it's come back with more force than ever before. And the reason I think it's come back with more force than ever before is because of the internet and content like this. If we look back at the ancient civilizations, what was different is they were all doing their own thing. They were assigning long hair to men and having it a different meaning and you could only wear it if this or that or blah, 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 blah. And none of these societies were connected so they couldn't keep up with each other. But now with the internet and how everything sort of unfolded and evolved, we're always connected to each other at all different times and people can join different communities or different nations, if you like, from sitting in their living room with one click of a button. So the trend almost can never really die anymore. As long as there's people that are willing to go and support those groups and networks and societies, I guess, in the modern day, I really, really don't think it's an option for long hair to go out of fashion again, if you know what I mean. Because we're all too connected and with influencers as well, that Thomas in Action guy, and I'm like, now there's lots of influencers out there that, now they do their own styles. They're, it's all about individual. We're in a time of individuality where people express who they are and how they see the world and how they want to look. And we all draw inspo from each other. So if you have a look at other Instagrammers that have long hair as well, you'll notice that they all, some wear them really straight, some wear wavy, some wear really tight curls, but we all have long hair in common and we don't have any limitation on our physical environment of who we can go and hang out with, if you know what I mean. So you're hanging out with me here and I'm filming this in Australia, you know? But I can connect with people that are in Egypt and Europe and America about the one topic and we can keep it relevant. I just think social media is 
the mouthpiece to keep it going forever. I don't think it's going to die. That's my hint on it anyway. So I think it's got a lot of longevity and I'm here for the long term as well. I'm gonna keep growing my hair until it hits my bloody butt. I think it's really, really cool to be a man in today's society with, I mean, everything's getting accepted and more normalized. So long hair is cool. Um, being gay is cool. Being colored is cool. Everything's cool now, you know? And everyone's so much more accepting. There is still a lot of hate out there. But the cool thing about the internet as well is you can build communities like the Man Buns and Mains community where you have a safe space to go all the time, at any time, as long as you've got a device and an internet connection. Happy days. Be who you wanna be, be free. Because right now we can. I think that's something to definitely appreciate. And that brings me to the end of today's history lesson. I could have talked way more about all the other different points in time, but I think Kim just told me that we're up to like 19 minutes on this video. And if I kept talking about it, it'd be crazy. So I just wanted to sort of highlight the most like dominant points in history where we saw long hair and how it's gone in and out. So I hope you found that as interesting as I did because yeah, when I was reading about it, I was like, oh wow, I, we really do live in the best time ever to do whatever you want. So why not enjoy it while we've got it? I mean, according to Greta Thunberg, if we don't sort our shit out in 10 years, we're all gonna be dead anyway, so we may as well enjoy it now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you Beard Brand Alliance for uh, giving me this video idea. I really love your shit. <laughs> He's got a very nice beard and very beautiful long salt and pepper hair. <laughs> love him. If you haven't already gone and followed the Man Buns and Mains Instagram, please make sure you do that. I'm trying to grow that community. That is also another sort of stronghold for long hair promotion. I wanna feature as many of you as I possibly can on there because this is what I mean. We're in that time where we can all be connected and that Instagram page is a great one. If you wanna read more about the history of long, men's long hair, I have done a blog post about that as well and left it in the description box. If you wanna join the Man Buns and Mains hair growth community, there is a link to that in the description box as well. And please leave me a comment with what you thought and a thumbs up because you know it helps me in that algorithm. All right guys, I'll catch you later and have a good one. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Bye.